And what do you get? You get a Delaware C Corp. And why do you get a Delaware C Corp? Because that's what VCs want, you know, from an investment perspective. And also, to be fair, if you grow that C Corp and you have an exit five years later, then uh, the first 10 million is, you know, per founder is tax free, right? And gross. But we're talking about QSBS, right? Which is we're talking about QSBS. And a lot of people, whenever they have their first exit and then they hear about QSBS, they get really upset because they're like, I wish I knew about this sooner. And so it's a little bit of a gray area, but right now mm-hmm. the way it stands is that investors can also take part in QSBS. Yes. And then you can right. do QSBS stacking where yep. if you have a trust, you can say like my son, my daughter, my wife, that's 40 million yep. tax free. Yeah, as long as you want to break the trusts out under different names. Yep. There's also another way. It's whatever's greater between 10 million or whatever the input is on the QSBS. Yeah, yeah, a, I am forgetting that formula, but yeah, there's a return on the invested capital, like up to a certain point. It usually works out that the 10 million is the larger of the two numbers. So I think based on the formula. I think it's the first time it's come up on the podcast and it might be worth adding to the show notes that if you guys are interested in QSBS. There's some really good free articles, um, meaning like the law firms have written up, like explaining in detail, even explaining the whole packing and stacking and like all the, the high chinks one can play. But I'll actually go back to that to say why it didn't end up being bad for us that we were an LLC taxed as an escort. Now, rewinding, the law changed in 2012, and then maybe got a little more favorable a little bit after that. But we predated that. So we didn't actually get to cha- to take advantage of QSBS because it didn't exist when we were incorporated. And so it mm-hmm. actually, don't, you have to have been incorporated after a certain date. So we were an escort, which again, for folks who don't know, if you're a profitable company, then the money just comes straight back to the shareholders. There is no corporate light layer of taxation. It just goes right back to you, whatever tax rate you pay. And oh, by the way, there is based on the more recent tax cuts, the 20, whatever, 17 tax cuts, you get a 20% discount on your taxes that you pay relative to like if you just had a job and you had a W-2. So it's pretty favorable in that sense. So yes, and, and long answer to your question, we were sweeping out that cash flow. So that four million. So yeah, I think I I cleared like two and a half that year or something, just in you know in my pocket. And why were we doing that? We we did we we kind of we were. It wasn't to say that we weren't reinvesting in the company. We were. You know, when I look back and when I was talking to my co-founder Raj, and we were looking back and I'm like, yeah, we should have reinvested more. But it was the scrappiness that got us there that gave us that sort of scrappy save it all gene. <laughs> so maybe when we got to the point where we were really cash flowing quite a lot we were still being conservative. And sometimes channels get saturated and just because you put more money into it doesn't mean it's going to pay off like that. I'll I'll finish the thought on the QSBS and then I'll jump into that, which is to say there's a break point at which, and this is still true in the law today, there's a break point at which actually being an S-Corp and being taxed that way is superior to to doing all of the QSBS hijinks. Uh, And that's because whatever money gets taxed when you're a QSBS gets taxed at 23.8%. Uh, because there's an extra 3.8 that got added in the law some years ago. Whatever money you get when you do the uh, the other approach, the S corp, it actually gets taxed at a lower rate of 20. percent And this is leaving the state state tax stuff out of it. And so that 3.8 delta, it turns out that the break point is somewhere between 50 and 60 million dollars. So that's just mathematically, if you take one 10 million dollar deduction. Uh, so if you were to hypothetically be a unicorn, let's just say you were to be a unicorn, let's say you were to be a bootstrap unicorn, not many of yeah. those, but hey, here in Atlanta, MailChimp is one of them. So it does happen. I don't know how MailChimp was incorporated, but if they were an LLC, then kudos to Ben Chestnut and co, because they probably saved hundreds of millions in taxes. Um, so yeah, so there is actually a time and a place for being a, being an escort, even in the tech game. For more inspiring stories and valuable lessons from successful entrepreneurs, be sure to listen and subscribe wherever you get podcasts. Thanks for listening. Until next time, keep pushing boundaries and writing your next chapter.